Welcome to video 9 in series 3 and in this video I'll show you how to use tags to differentiate between game objects and also find game objects that have that tag. So first off I'll set these cubes here. Uh, they currently have no tag so they're untagged right? So this is where you add a tag. So I'll add a tag, a brand new one, and I'll call it enemy. Now I need to assign it. Those ones that you see here, these are defaults that come with Unity. This is the one I've just added, enemy. Uh, so to quickly uh, assign it, I can just control select all of the cubes and then just click uh, enemy there. All right, that's done. Now I'll go to the shoot script and I'll, instead of having the debug log statement that I had before, I'm going to do a check and then run that uh, instruction. Uh, but before I do that, uh, a YouTube viewer pointed out something uh, really useful and that's for the line ending stuff. And you can actually save it in the required format ahead of time. So you just save it and then uh, when you do that, then you won't get the warning message in uh, Unity. All right, uh, so now that I've done that, now I'm going to do a check for the tag. So here where I've fired my Raycast, now I'm going to check what the tag of the hit transform was. So if hit.transform.compare tag, and what was the name of the tag? It was enemy. So you have to type it in exactly how you've written it. And uh, so if, I, if the hit uh, object has a tag of enemy, then I'll run this instruction. And I'll modify it just slightly inside of it. I'm going to write here uh, enemy and I'll put a space here plus. This is how you add two strings together. So it'll read enemy, a little space there, cube, enemy, cube one, enemy, cube two, like that. All right, so then in else I'll just say, uh, well, debug log, uh, I'll just say not an enemy. All right, so if I just jump back now, hit play, go in, and there we go. Enemy cube one, enemy cube, enemy cube two, and if it's the floor, it's not an enemy. Okay, so that's that. So now you know how to use it to differentiate between game objects. Uh, another really common use is to actually uh, find game objects with that tag. So I'll just make a new script. It's just an example, that's all. I'll call it, uh, say, find enemies. And I'll just put it in there. Um, I'll attach it to the player. I can attach it to anything. It doesn't actually matter what I attach it to. It's just for example. Uh, and then I'll open it up. Uh, okay, I'll just say reload all. Uh, once again, I'll come here and I'll just uh, change the line endings to begin with. Okay, and sometimes it doesn't want to save. It doesn't want to save when I hit Control S. So I'll just uh, do this manually. I'll just close it down, go back to Unity, uh, open it back up. All right, and it's fine now. Uh, first thing, namespace, because since I'm doing that, chapter one. Okay, and I'll just grab all of this, put it in there. And just uh, tab it. Okay. All right. And now for this, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an array to capture all of the game objects that have that tag. An array you can think of as like a belt which has slots in it. And that is, well, that's it. An array has slots, except an array uh, can have as many slots uh, as you make up. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to define how many it starts with. It'll just uh, add them as required. So I'm going to make it off the type game object to make an array to make your uh, variable an array. You put two square brackets, so it's off the type game object, and I'm going to call it um, enemy uh, or enemies rather. I'll call it that. Okay, and that's it. It's currently empty. There's it has no slots at the moment. I have to do something. Uh, so well, what I'll do is here. I'll make a new function. I'll say search. Search for enemies. And then the way to do it is you say you'll assign to enemies with the equals game object dot 
find game objects with tags. So this will find everything that has a tag. This is, by the way, a very slow operation. So any find game object, game objects with tag are slow operations. So you try to avoid doing that inside of an update. And you would rather do that in start or awake or something, well, probably start, uh, rather than trying to run it uh, frequently. So you try to not do it frequently or when you have a menu open or something like that. Okay, so what is that tag? That tag is enemy. Okay, done. All right, so I've got my array now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate through the array and just display the name of whatever game object is in that array. First check I need to do is say if uh, enemies.length is greater than zero. So it shouldn't be an empty array. I shouldn't try to iterate through an empty array. So if there was nothing found, then this won't run. It'll just find, oh yeah, the length is zero, so I won't run the rest of this code. Then I'll say for each. So I'm going to iterate using a for each loop. There's a different couple of different types of loops. Uh, so for each game object, you have to state the type of uh, the, well, the type that you're iterating. And because this is enemy, the enemies is of the type game object, I have to say that each thing that I find in enemies is also a game object. So I'll just put in geo is quite a common way to say it. it means game object, except just like that. You can call it anything. For each game object go, uh, in enemies. So for each item in enemies that's of the type game object, then I will say uh, debug.log go.name. All right. Now I need to call the function, of course. So I'll say search for enemies. Done. And uh, this should work. So if I come back, clear the log. And I've already attached it to the player. And I hit play. There we go. It finds all the game objects uh, that have the tag enemy. Uh, now, another thing to note is that if the game objects are disabled, so they're not active rather, yeah, well, same thing. Uh, if the game objects are not active and then you run it, it, they won't get found. So that's something to remember that deactivated game objects are not found with these game object of find or find with tag and so on. Now, if you needed these you needed to store a reference to them in an array or a list or something somewhere at the start of the game, but you then wanted to disable them because you maybe you're going to have them activated when the player is close enough or something like that. Then what you do is, is you uh, then deactivate it once you've got the reference to it. Once you've established the reference to it, then deactivate it. So you could say go dot set active, uh, false, for example, and then uh, now when I run it, I'll have established a reference to each one and then deactivated them. And I could reactivate whichever one I needed to, uh, well, when I need to, because I now have the reference to it. I know where it is, its position and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so that's it. That's a little bit of an intro on using tags. You can do quite a bit more than that with them. But anyway, that's enough for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.